everybody welcome to another video today's video is a special collaboration with chalk and notch patterns so i am part of the 2020 chalk and notch collaborator team i'm super excited to bring my make to you guys the pattern that i chose is called the farah it is a blouse and dress pattern for wovens we're thinking light to medium weight wovens such as rayon crepe linen shirting your cotton lawns voils bulgars could look really pretty there are two views view a is the one i am wearing which has the ruffled sleeves and view b is sleeveless with a front ruffle and like i said before you can make it in a blouse or a dress i made the dress version both versions feature a side slit with a high low hem and i have a story about that because i had a little mishap with mine and i ended up having to change mine into a mini dress so chalk and notch kindly gifted us the fabrics to use for all projects my fabric is a viscose linen slub from blackbird fabrics and this gorgeous color is called lime zest unfortunately it is out of stock on the website right now but i noticed that they restock fairly often i'm gonna link their website down below if you want to stock in this fabric this fabric is a really good combination of rayon and linen so it's really soft and drapey like rayon but you can definitely feel the linen texture and weight i have a really hard time with linen i feel like if every single time i've used linen even though i would pre-wash and iron the entire yardage before cutting my pattern pieces i find i always have issues with the fabric growing and that is exactly what happened this time so this pattern is available in sizes 0 to 18. i made a mock-up of size 12 but the fabric that i use is almost like a quilting weight cotton it was 100 percent cotton and it was fitting fairly close on the bust and the hip i actually only cut the blouse version for my mock-up so i decided to go up to the 14 big mistake because of the linen content of this fabric it grew like crazy i mean it grew in width and length and i felt like i was wearing a nightgown so i had to have a make it work moment literally hours before my shoot and i decided that i would cut it into a mini dress i had all intentions of wearing the dress all dressed up with heels i ended up switching to a mini dress to wear casually with sneakers I absolutely love how it turned out in the end, but there was a little bit of drama to get to that point. Now, the way the pattern pieces are shipped, there is a special extra addition on the side seams to account for the side slit and that mitered corner. Because I had to chop off some inches, I lost all of that, but I still wanted to do the high-low hem. So I did leave some space for a slit and I just folded back the seam allowances and top stitched them down the way you would do a normal slit without a mitered corner. And what I did was I left the back two inches longer than the front. However, like I said, this fabric was growing. So I feel like if it's uneven, like one side of the back is longer than the other side. And from the pictures, you'll probably notice at the splits that they're different lengths. Another thing is in the rush of things, I completely forgot when you turn up the back hem that you need to fold under that quarter inch so that from afar when the back shows because it's longer, you would just see a really neat finish. I completely forgot and surged my hem. And it wasn't until I was editing my photos, I was like, oh my gosh, you can see the surge on the entire back hem showing. So I need to fix that and even out the hem as well before I actually wear the dress. Now, this dress is not the average for a dress. You know, Kira had to put her spray on it. You know, I like to dabble in hand embroidery every now and then. So I do have some hand embroidery on the yoke of this dress. To be honest, it was supposed to have a little bit more, but I kind of forgot how long hand embroidery takes because it's been a while since I've done it. This took so long, I wasn't able to do the other side because then I had to wash it out and wait for it to dry before I could then sew up the entire dress. And the hand embroidery that I've done on this is a sugar skull with monarch butterflies. Today is actually Dia de los Muertos. Yesterday was Halloween, so that is the theme I went for for my fire dress. And it does have a deeper meaning. It is a very special dress. It's a tribute to my aunt who my family lost this year to cancer. I have a very detailed blog post about this dress, about the embroidery, the meaning, 
about my aunt and about Dia de los Muertos on a whole. Funny enough, I did not know a thing about Dia de los Muertos until this year's Halloween. So yeah, I actually found this design on Urban Threads. When I went looking for embroidery designs that would fit my aunt, because I knew I wanted this dress to be a tribute to her, it's the reason I chose this color and everything. Because it was approaching the Halloween season, all of the Halloween designs came up first. And I kind of fell in love with all the Sugar Skull designs, but I wanted to do some research first into the meaning because although I've seen Sugar Skulls before, like I would see them in baking shows on Food Network, I never really looked into it to find the meaning. To be honest, I kind of dismissed this at first and went into all the ordinary designs, but I just kept coming back to this one for some reason. So yes, there is a whole story and explanation about this particular design that I chose and what it means to me. It is the longest blog post I have ever written in life. So I would really love for you to go and read that blog post. I really understand the deeper meaning of this dress. I would really, really appreciate it if you do that. Also, if you're interested in learning how I did this embroidery, how I applied the embroidery pattern to the dress, and if you wanna see the moment when the stabilizer got rinsed away and all that good stuff, I recorded a lot of clips <laughs> during the process. So I'm gonna insert those now so you can see the process of embroidering my far dress yoke. Okay, so this is my plan for the embroidered yoke. At first, I cut out the yoke piece and interfaced it, but when I actually could still see the mark, when I tried this little baby hoop, I feel like if this piece is too small and it could possibly get skewed. So what I did instead is I cut a large rectangle piece, interfaced that, I stitched it all around just because I know when you're using embroidery hoops, the interfacing could move. And this is some pretty cheap interfacing that isn't the best. So it does come off easily. So I stitched it all around the entire rectangle. And then my plan is to then draw out the yoke here. This is my front yoke pattern piece. My plan is to draw this out and then draw in the seam allowances and then i'll get to printing my embroidery pattern so let's do that now i hope you can see on camera i have my seam allowances drawn in with chalk and then i have my outer line drawn in with a water soluble marker and already i could see the interfacing kind of bubbling on this fabric i feel like this particular interfacing does not mesh well with this fabric. I'm trying to decide if I should stitch these lines just to make sure nothing moves because I'm not sure that this outer line is enough given that the interfacing has already let go in the corners and so forth. I think I should stitch the main line as well. This is what I'm using. It's called Stick and Stitch by Sulky. I found this on Amazon and the reviews were pretty good. So the papers that are in here are sticky and you actually run it through your printer with the design and then you peel off the back and stick it to your fabric. And when you're finished embroidering, you, you just rinse it and all of the sticky stuff goes away and you're left with just the threads. I tested it on a scrap yesterday. It worked amazingly. I am so surprised. <laughs> So this is what I'll be using. So when I'm finished um, printing the design on the sheet, I will show you what it looks like. So this is what the print holds on the sulky stick and stitch looks like. I'm trying to figure out if I want to use the colored ones. So then I just embroider over the colors because this is actually a machine embroidery pattern and then when it's translated over to the hand embroidery pattern you can see that a lot of the elements are missing like these are just flat lines as opposed to these ones and like all of these are filled in over here with like different colors and shadows and that's missing from here so i think i want to attempt 
embroidering over the colored one so that technically I have like a color guide as well um I think that is what I want to do I'm gonna cut these out and just place them on top of the yoke to see how I feel and decide if I'm going to use the color or the black and white I have a feeling I'm going to use the color especially because of time though so this is kind of the placement I'm going for um, not 100% sure I'm going to use this yet I'm going to work on the main piece and then if I have time then I will decide on this one but one of the things I'm trying to figure out now is I don't know how this sticky stuff is going to function in this hoop I'm a little bit worried that it's going to do some stretching and warping and it's not going to want to cooperate because if you look at the size some of the corners are going to be outside well there's one way to find out so let's try it and see what happens so i have it stuck down but to be honest i'm a little bit worried about how close it is to the seam allowance line especially right here and right here at the tips of the butterflies but i guess i'm just gonna keep going for whatever back whenever <laughs> and fingers crossed hope for the best y'all this is so scary i wish you could feel what this feels like like uh, stretching the sticky stuff <sighs> kind of freaking out about how these butterflies are gonna be affected obviously specifically those two yeah i'm a bit worried not gonna lie but on we go to embroidering The moment of truth. You guys, I've literally just woken up. I'm so excited to go check my embroidery. It's on the line outside right now. <sighs> Super nervous, but excited at the same time. So, this is the one issue I'm having after the stick and stitch is rinsed out. I feel like if in like really dense places especially the stick and stitch didn't wash out from underneath so like here you can see that it looks a little bit dirty and these baby pink ones and these light yellow ones it looks kind of dirty and I don't have time to wash this again to wait on it to dry so it's kind of gonna have to stay like this the other thing is that the interfacing did not survive <laughs> all of the handling and everything but I mean that's fine because this is mainly where I needed it so yeah I'm just I'm a bit disappointed because of how dirty some of the pieces are but overall it survived the wash and most of the stick and stitch did come out we officially have a yoke so as you can see i cut around that um thread that i had stitched to mark the outline obviously i measured against the other yoke piece and also the pattern piece just to make sure it stayed the correct size which it did i really wish i had the time to do the butterfly over here because i feel like this side looks extremely bare now but yeah this is finished results and now i'm going to go and sew up my fire dress so that was the first time i tried embroidery using the sulky stick and stitch stabilizer it was great but i think i need to find a way <laughs> next time to make sure all of the stabilizer comes out I don't know if throwing it in the washing machine would have helped, but I was really scared to do that. 
also i forgot to say that if you have any tips for sewing with linen especially in relation to the fabric growing please leave them down below because this is an issue that i seem to always have and i don't know how to get away from it anyway let's take a look at my photos <laughs> Thank you to Gabriella from Chalk and Nut for picking me to join the collaboration team for 2020. It is truly an honor. I had so much fun with this collaboration and I'm really happy I was able to put my own creative spin on it. Now this dress is a very special dress to me. This is a pattern I've been eyeing up for some time now. I'm so happy I got the opportunity to finally make it up and just at the right time. Of course, I will link the pattern down below if you want to go ahead and check it out. I am hearing a pressure washer and I really hope that you're not hearing that. <laughs> anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed seeing the whole process. Do not forget to head over to my blog to read all the details and all about the special meaning of this dress. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give me a big thumbs up. Also click the subscribe button down below if you have not done so already. I am so close to 2,000 subscribers. So thank you to my OGs, to all of you who've been sticking with me from the get-go. To be honest, my channel is a little bit all over the place right now. I still don't have my full recording space set up yet in my new home. There's a lot going on with unpacking still. But I'm working on it, okay? So thank you guys for sticking with me. So that is it. I am out and I will catch you in my next video. Bye.